I'm Keith Krauss. I'm a professor of international politics at the Geneva Graduate Institute and director of its Center on Conflict Development and Peacebuilding. I'm here at the U.S. Institute of Peace to talk about new actors and issues in contemporary peacebuilding. In domestic contexts, we have lots of good evidence about what works and what doesn't work to prevent and reduce armed violence from all its sources. Internationally, especially in post-conflict contexts, there is very little programming or very little policy making that tells us how to actually create sort of peaceful and stable societies, especially in post-conflict situations. And there you need evidence not just about who is doing what to whom, but also what kind of programs and, and policies might work in these contexts. And that's, that's a research question that I think needs to be tackled much more broadly uh, in the international community. I think there's two things to be clear on. One is that it's not a sort of confrontational revisionist versus uh, traditional mode. It's not as if China is trying to overturn uh, the norms of international peace building, but they're certainly interpreting them differently and they're certainly practicing them differently. So there's very little emphasis on what we would think of as human rights, much more emphasis on basic human needs, um, and a reinforcement of the, the classical norm of, of state sovereignty and non-intervention, which is consistent with Chinese foreign policy in general. China has started uh, a couple of decades ago being very active in peacekeeping, both in sending uh, troops and, and support, but also in the UN system. And now they are using what we could call tools of economic diplomacy and, and traditional diplomacy to increase their footprint in a number of post-conflict settings, uh, Angola, Myanmar, Sri Lanka, uh, etc., uh, South Sudan in particular, where they have focused on building infrastructure, um, reinforcing governance and state capacity. Sometimes it's authoritarian states, uh, sometimes it's not. They, they're actually fairly neutral on this question. But by and large, uh, leaving aside what we think of as core elements of liberal peace building. So not particularly interested in support to civil society, not particularly interested in promoting rule of law and support to human rights, but rather a sort of a hands-off approach uh, that emphasizes national uh, autonomy and national sovereignty. And this is consistent, again, uh, with the way they vote in the United Nations, the way they act in the Global South. Uh, and sometimes it's described as, as the developmental peace, peace through economic development, as opposed to peace through democracy promotion.